Welcome to this video on polymerization. Now polymerization is when you take single molecules, and we call these monomers, and you join them all together to get one long chain, which is called a polymer. And polymerization is the process of how that happens. Now we did learn some stuff about this in level two, and this was all to do with addition reactions. So we'd have a group of alkenes with double bonds in them, and that's what we knew polymerization was. Now those double bonds would break open, and one open bond from one molecule would connect to another open bond from another molecule. And all together they'd be pulled up and make one long chain called a polymer. So the terms we needed to learn were a monomer, which are these individual parts, and polymer, which is the long chain once they've added all together. So if you want more detail on this, go to the level two organic chemistry video on addition reactions. There's more in there. Now, the one we're gonna focus on today is condensation polymerization. And it's called this because they all undergo condensation reactions. Now we saw a few condensation reactions in video two in reaction schemes. Now two of the most notable were when a carboxylic acid and an alcohol create an ester. Now that has a byproduct of water. And the same thing with an acyl chloride and alcohol create an ester, and they have a byproduct of HCl, hydrochloric acid. Now, a condensation reaction is when two small particles, one from each of the reactants, joins together to make another molecule. In this first one, we get a hydrogen from alcohol and an OH group from the carboxylic acid, and that joins together to make H2O, or water. In the second one, we have a chlorine group plus an H from alcohol to join together and make HCl. Because they join together, it's called condensing, and therefore these are condensation reactions. Now this is relevant because in this video, there's gonna be condensation reactions where we remove small particles, and in turn, bigger particles or molecules join together to make polymers. Now there's two different ways that you can make polymers with condensation polymerization. Now the first one is when you have one type of monomer with two different functional groups. And you need two different functional groups, kind of like if you're linking arms with somebody to create a long person-to-person -person chain. You need to link arms on both sides, so you have two arms, or in the case of a monomer, two functional groups, both of which could link to the next molecule. So we could have one molecule with two different functional groups, or we could have two different molecules with each of their functional groups twice. So they'd join together and then they'd have two other functional groups on the outside to create one long polymer. So let's look into detail about how some of these work and we're going to cover five different reactions relating to polymerization today. So let's start by looking at two different molecules that have their functional group twice. Now the first example is forming a polyester. Now polyester is a really common fabric, a lot of things are made out of it. Now this is designed by having a carboxylic acid, and it has two carboxylic acid groups on it, so we call it a dicarboxylic acid, and a diol. Now this is an alcohol with two alcohol groups on it. And what you get is the OH from the carboxylic acid group and the H from the diol, from the alcohol part, join together to make H2O, they make water. And this leftover oxygen from the alcohol group will join straight up to the carbon from the carboxylic acid group and this happens again as this water molecule is released and again as this water molecule condenses together. And what you end up with is you have one long chain where these two original monomers alternate together. So they're all connected by that ester-like bond where that original oxygen holds the two molecules together. And you'll notice there's plus three H2Os on the end and that's because you've condensed out the water. There's a condensation reaction. So this is a dicarboxylic acid, a two-ended carboxylic acid, plus a diol, a double-ended alcohol, and that goes to polyester, which means many esters. So you're getting lots of ester bonds again to make one long chain, plus that water which is condensed out. Now we could also do this with an acyl chloride, which has two ends, called a diacyl chloride, and a diol, again, that alcohol that has two ends on it as well. You'd get the same kind of thing. You'd still get polyester, but instead of an OH and an H being condensed out to make water, you'd have an H and a Cl condensed out to make HCl. So this is how this works when you're creating polyester, which is a common fabric. Another example we can look at is polyamides. Now again, this creates useful plastic-like things like nylon. So here we've got two groups. Here we've got an amine group and we've got a carboxylic acid group. So we could remove an H from the amine group and an OH from the carboxylic acid group. Now it could be either H from this amine group here. And directly this carbon would connect up to the nitrogen here. And the same thing would happen when we have OH and H, OH and H, all condensed out to make water. And that gives you a final result with an amide link in it. And you'll see the nitrogen on one skips right over this H and OH group, which has been condensed out so it makes water, and connects right up to this carbon here. And you can call this type of bond an amide link. Here we have a diamine, because we've got a two-sided amine, 
plus your dicarboxylic acid, your two-sided carboxylic acid, going to a polyamide, and that's a thing like nylon. So we could also do this, instead of having a double-sided carboxylic acid, we could have a double-sided acyl chloride. And in the same way, instead of OH getting kicked off, you'd have the Cl group getting kicked off. So you wouldn't have water condensed out, you'd have hydrochloric acid, HCl, being condensed out in this case. So this is how you form polyamides. Now one thing to note, if you ever spill an acid on nylon, you'll notice there's a big hole in it pretty much straight away. And this is because one of the reactions we learned about in the last video, called acid hydrolysis. Now, acid hydrolysis will break up this amide link. So you can say that acid hydrolysis will break this bond. So it will put it back to those original monomers, which are the original molecules. And the example is, if you can spill acid on nylon, you're going to get a hole. Because it breaks up that long nylon strand or that long nylon polymer. So that's what you need to know with polyamides. Now, the third example we're going to look at is proteins. Now, proteins are all throughout your body. They make everything happen. Structures, they carry out important functions. So if you study biology, you will have heard this term polypeptide chain or amino acid chain throwing around. This is where you have what's called amino acids, which are a derivative of amides, and they are individual monomers that join together in a long chain. So here we've got one amino acid, and you'll notice that this has an NH group, so an amine group on the end, and it has a carboxylic acid group on the other side. And so what happens is you can kick off the OH of the carboxylic acid group, kick off one of these hydrogens here, and then this carbon will directly connect up to the next molecule's nitrogen. And you'll see this happening here. Here you've got the carbon with the double bonded O, which is this carbon here, and it connects directly up to the next molecule's nitrogen, back on here once one of those H's has been kicked off. And you notice, if it's missing an OH and an H, water is going to be released as a condensation part of this reaction. Hence why it's called condensation polymerization. And this is an example of one monomer that has two different functional groups, coming together to form a polymer. Now as well as the word polypeptide, occasionally you'll see the word dipeptide come up. Now this is just if there's two amino acids joined together rather than a long chain of amino acids. So for example here, you've got an amine group, you've got a carboxylic acid group, and they join together and there's only two of them, again, H2O is released as a part of that condensation reaction, you're gonna end up with a dipeptide. So you've only got one peptide bond in the middle holding it together. So now that we've done three different types of condensation polymerization, we're just going to have a little recap of what we've done. The first thing we learned about was polyester, and this can be formed when there's many ester bonds. So that could be a carboxylic acid with two ends, so a dicarboxylic acid and a diol, which is a two-ended alcohol, and that might make polyester. Or you could do an acyl chloride plus a diol, again, an acyl chloride plus an alcohol goes to an ester. And if you do many of these things, both of which have two ends on them, you're going to get polyester, a long chain. Now the difference is in what you'll condense out. So with the carboxylic acid, you're getting rid of an OH and an H, versus with an acyl chloride, you're getting rid of a Cl and an H. So you'd condense out HCl rather than water. We also learned about polyamides, where you can have an amine plus a carboxylic acid goes to a polyamide. You can also do an amine plus an acyl chloride goes to a polyamide as well. Finally, we learned about a type of polyamide that's commonly called polypeptides. And they're made up of amino acid monomers. And proteins are critical to the function and survival of all living organisms on the planet. Now the last two things we're going to learn about are to do with soap making. The first of these is creating triglycerides, which are actually called fats and oils. So if you want to create fats and oils, these are triglycerides and this is how it works. It's with a polymerization reaction. So you can get a carboxylic acid and an alcohol going to an ester in water. And we learned this in the previous video and we've seen it come up again in this video. But this happens on a particularly big scale. So you can get what's called a 1,2,3 triol. So this is a three-ended alcohol. There's an OH group, OH group, OH group. And you can mix it with fatty acids. Now, fatty acids means that you've got an amino acid with a very long chain of carbons following it on. Now, you get three of those. You're going to have three different reactions where this alcohol group and this fatty acid come together, this amino acid group. Now, they're going to join up in a condensation reaction, and you're going to get one molecule which has three long strands. And this is called a triglyceride. So the things that you need to know is that you need to have a 1,2,3 triol, which means you've got three alcohol groups right next to each other, and three long fatty acids. So this has carboxylic acid groups at the end of a long chain of carbons. And that's going to form triglyceride. And like always, you're going to condense out the water. This OH group and this H group come together. 
Now, one other thing to note is that these R groups, these chains of carbons, can be really different and really long to each other. They don't all have to be identical. And depending on what these R groups are, gives the properties of whether you create a fat or an oil. And these triglycerides lead on to our fifth and final type of reaction. This is saponification, which is soap making. Now, this is when you have the base hydrolysis of a triglyceride. Now, we just learned about triglycerides, which is where you get these three long fatty chains of carbons where the carboxylic acid group connected back up to that alcohol. So we've really got three different esters here. And then you can put a base on it. Now, what happens, and we learned this in video two, is when you put a base on things, it breaks open this bond again. And when you do base hydrolysis of an ester, you're going to get a carboxylic acid salt. Now, the interesting part is a carboxylic acid salt, in this case, if you do it with sodium hydroxide, gives you three different soap molecules. So you can put sodium hydroxide on triglyceride, which is a fat or an oil. You're going to get glycerol, which is a three-ended alcohol coming out of it, because we always get alcohol when we react things with esters. But these three carboxylic acid salts are the important part. They are called soap molecules. And if you remember the summary from esters, there's this last part, which is where you undergo base hydrolysis, sometimes called saponification, to give a carboxylic acid salt. So this is one reaction with triglycerides, which actually breaks up the polymer chain to give you soap. So here's what you need to know from this video. You need to know that there are five different reactions which you'll have to understand. And the first one is polyesters, which means we have lots of esters all connected together in a long chain. And this can be formed with carboxylic acids and alcohols. Now, again, we need two ends on each of those. can also be done with a diacyl chloride and an alcohol as well. Now, when we do polyamides, this is things like nylon, we have carboxylic acids and diamines, so a two-ended amine group. Now, this undergoes acid hydrolysis to actually create your polyamide. And finally, we learned about polypeptides, which are also called proteins. These are long chains of amino acids. And amino acids are single groups in your body, and on one end, they typically have a carboxylic acid group, and on the other end, they have an amine group. And those will join together one by one to make long chains of amino acids, which are called proteins, and they're really prevalent in our bodies. So that's the first lot of polymers that we found, and all of them condense out either hydrochloric acid or water. Now, finally, we learned about esters. Now, in esters, we learned about creating a triglyceride. So this is a long-chain carboxylic acid. So this is when you've got this carboxylic acid, which has a long chain of carbons off it, and they interact with a 1, 2, 3 trial. That means that you're going to get each of these alcohol groups joining up with one of these carboxylic acids. So this makes a triglyceride, which are really three esters all connected together. Now, the interesting thing you need to know is this is called fats and oils. In everyday life, fats and oils are triglycerides. Now, the final thing we learned was about soap making, or called saponification. And this is where you get one of these triglycerides, you mix it with sodium hydroxide, and this forms a carboxylic acid salt, otherwise known as soap. So if you want to get all chemistry about it, this is formed by base hydrolysis of an ester, which we touched on in video two. So this is everything you need to know for condensation polymerization.